Hello and welcome to part 5 of the Godot Tower Defence tutorial, well done for sticking with it and thank you very much indeed for all of the support you guys have been giving me. I know the top 6 YouTubers that are worth looking at went down really really well so thank you, let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of those. In the meantime, let's crack on with this, what we're going to try and do today is we're going to tackle a rather sticky subject called ray casting. Now I've noticed in some other engines um, it's a lot easier. In Godot, it's, for me it's a little bit fiddly, but it, we, we'll get there, we'll get it working, don't you worry, we'll get, we'll, we'll get there. Um, but we need to think about some of the pieces that we need to fix. So what I might do, for those that care about um, just about the ray casting bit, I'll put a little uh, timeline over there somewhere um, and you can you can just go straight to it. But for those that want to actually continue the tutorial, stick with me now and let's just talk about what we need to think about. And that is the fact that at the moment we've just laid this stuff down, but there's no way that this is going to work using a ray cast. Now the way a ray cast works is, as the name suggests, it casts a ray from a certain point through a vector direction uh, and sees what it hits. So what we would want to do in our example is we'd want to start clicking areas here. And when we click, it would it will need to know that it needs to fire a ray from where the mouse is downwards. In this example, perhaps hitting the, that, that, that crystal rock there, hitting the tree and so on. But none of these things here have got colliders on them, anything that the ray can actually intersect with. So we're going to need to add all of those in. So what I think I'll probably do is show you how to do one of them. Then I will do the rest. It's going to take me absolutely ages, but I will do the rest. Come back and then and then and then we can talk about uh, actually firing the ray. So let's do that. Let's go back to um, Godot. Let's just close that one down and bring up Godot. Here we are. And I will create a new um, a, uh, a new. 3D scene there, click on 3D here, and let's grab one of those tiles that we originally had in main here. If we click on main up here, we'll see that let's, you can see I've already done some already, so I have been practicing. Let's have a look at tile straight. So what we'll do, at the moment it's literally just dragging the, um, uh, the GLB file straight into that as a pack scene. So we're going to have to create a new one. Let's, let's just do that now. So if we just go into here and just say tile main, tile straight rather, straight right dot uh, it's not the snow tile it's this one here tile straight if we just drag that in not into that one haha <laughs> into that one like so right and there we go that's in there and what we want this to be now is we don't want this to be a node 3d i want this to be an area 3d so if we what we can do here is you can actually change the type here by clicking on change type and we'll just change it to area 3d Area 3D. It's going to have a little bit of a complaint in a second, but let's just rename this and we'll call this uh, tile straight here. Underscore straight. Pop. And then finally, what we'll do is we will um, we will add a, a collider with it. So it's going to complain here, you see. This, this node has no shape. It can't collide or interact with other objects. We need to add a collision shape 3D or a collision polygon 3D. So let's just do that. Right click, add child node, collision shape 3D. <coughs> Pop. And now that's going to complain. It's going to say, well, hang on, what collision shape do I need? And we'll, over here, we'll just click on here. Makes sense for it to just be a very simple box shape 3D, doesn't it? So we'll click on there, box shape. And it's way too big. So we just need to click on here. And I think the Y needs to be 0 0.2, which is now it's too low. So if we go down to the transform, uh, we're going to click on the, uh, the Y on the position here and do 0 0.1. And now you can see that it's a perfect box covering that as an area 3D. Now, one of the things that this ray needs to know is what it's colliding with. Now, there's a few ways we can do this. I've been looking at the layer mask, and I feel like maybe that's a subject we could cover. But honestly, I feel like that's just going to bring in too much confusion um, at, at this point if we if we start talking about layer masks and whatever for the ray casting. So for now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click on Tile Straight here. And over on the right-hand side, if I click on Node, and then groups. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add this this tile to a a group called oh I've got to name it first paths a path let's just call it path. I'm going to click on add. All right. So now this this tile straight now belongs to a group called path. So when we fire our ray, what we'll do is we'll see what group is associated with it. So we're going to have a we'll have a path group. We'll have a an empty tile group. We'll have a uh, a, a tree group. A, a rock group. Um, what's the other one? Um, 12 seconds later. What's the other one? 
One eternity later. An ore group. <laughs> That's what it is. An ore group. Sorry about that. I completely forgot which one it was. Uh, so, yeah, you've got rocks and you've got ore. So, so we'll, we'll have one of those. So, they, that way, then, it knows what it's colliding with. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to add all of the different tile shapes and, um, uh, and rock groups and tree groups and all that stuff similar to the way I have here and then I'll come back and then once that's all done we can talk about ray casting so sit tight right so I have gone through and I have created all of those tiles I've created a, an area node an area 3d for each one of them added a added the um, GLB file and added the collision shape and mashed it in so I've got tile straight uh, if we go to the groups you'll see the tile straight has not got a group that should be the path let's just make sure we add that um, and then tile corner uh, again, same gig uh, with a path in there, tile crossroads, all the same kind of thing. For tile crystal, this, these ones are slightly bigger on the box shape, and I've, I've named each one, I've put them as grid underscore. So tile crystals, grid underscore crystal, grid underscore rock, grid underscore tree, uh, grid empty, and path because that's well that's the end path. There we go. Sorry, yeah, these are in a slightly wonky order. <laughs> so all of those are done. So if we go back to main now. What we can do if we click on main and click on the inspector we need to start pushing these into the right slot here let's just hope hope this still works so tile straight well we know that's tile straight there so we just drag that into that and what's quite nice although that's not great it shows you the kind of little what it looks like so if we go to tile start and tile end which is this one let's just do a save of that i don't quite know then why oh there we go yeah so it has done it you see so you get a kind of view of what it looks like um, yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> There's probably a way that you can frame that. Anyway, uh, tile corner, we'll drag that into tile corner, tile crossing, tile crossroads, there, tile enemy uh, is the enemy itself, so we don't need to touch that. And then we've got all of the grid, um, uh, the outside, all, all the other pieces that fill up the, the grid. So tile crystal is tile crystal there. Um, rock is rock. Um, and then tile tree, guess what? tile tree and then these other empties are just the empty so just drag them in i kind of like the way i like the way that's working i like this sort of thing here you just got to, I guess you just got to save it at the right time tile empty tile empty there right and now so you see now we've actually created scenes for them rather than directly using the glb files that we imported from kenny so let's just click play fingers crossed it'll look okay and it does okay but nothing's changed well it has a bit Okay, it has a bit now. Each of these now has an area 3D around them that the raycast can use to define what it hits. Okay, so we're almost there at the raycast stage now. I wanted to show you something before I get there. I wanted to show you what one looks like in Unity. Here's what one looks like in Unity. Relatively straightforward. Uh, raycast, camera screen point to ray, mouse position. If I spin over to Godot, here's what it looks like in Godot. Pretty, pretty horrible. <laughs> um, the first bit I hope makes some sense. Uh, if input dot is mouse button pressed, mouse button left. Uh, yeah, that's just that's just capturing the mouse button. We can assign that to a uh, to one of the keys later on or whatever. But well, for now, I'm just looking at the input. You'll also notice, by the way, that I'm using it in physics process, which is the um, the guideline that you should use because apparently rays are best used in the physics thread. Um, I'm going to explain this very, very badly, but the, the physics thread is a separate thread potentially to the main thread. So they're saying you should use it in there when you're casting your rays and whatever. Um, this space state here, um, it's, to me, it's a little bit confusing, but I think my best understanding of this is, well, this is the world that you're in. Right? This is the world when, that we're going to use. We're going to, we're going to fire rays through, and I'm going to help you with it. Right? So get world 3D, direct space state, creates this reference to space state. And my, again, my understanding of that is that that isn't always available unless you're in physics process. So something to think about there. The mouse position. Get viewport dot get mouse position. Okay, fine. That's just boilerplate code. I can live with that. And then what we then have is we say right, okay. The origin is where our um, uh, our camera project rate origin is. A, it's a convenience method for us that says right, get the mouse position. That's where it's starting on the screen. And then the the end rather is the origin plus right where I've clicked um, times a raycast length, which I've set up here. I hope somewhere. Of 100 
right? Oh, you know, I've got a reference to the camera there as well. A ray cast length of 100. So that's, uh, I think it's 100 meters, whatever you want to call it here. So I think that's plenty uh, for us right now. So it's going to shoot down through the ray until it finds something. Um, and then what you do is you run this function here called the physics ray query parameters 3D dot create origin comma end. That will create the query for us that says, right, this is what the ray is going to do. We need to add a, but uh, we need to set the Boolean collide with areas equals true. Otherwise, it won't collide with area 3Ds. All right, so the ray will not hit the um, uh, the area 3D. If we were to use a physics body 3D or something, we wouldn't have to do that. But this is the area 3Ds that we've been using, um, so that we have to set that to true. And then finally, we can cast our ray. Right, so this is the actual line that casts the ray. It says uh, it returns a dictionary uh, intersect ray. And the query itself right so we've got all of this stuff here to um uh just to create a ray <laughs> point to point in the direction i'm sure some of you that know your godot will be watching this and that's no, straightforward to me that's complicated like i said i will as always i'll make the uh, source code available and you can take a look and have a play but for me that it took me a while to get to this stage so i'm very glad that i did this before i um i uh, i started the tutorial otherwise you'd have been uh, watching me Try to code this together, that'd be never good. And then what we say is, right, well, if you find something, okay, so if you return a result, then let's print the ray result. Um, and then we're going to get the collision. The reason I've gone for collision object 3D, by the way, just, it's just I'm using a bit of object inherit, object orientation here and just saying, well, if the collision object could be an area 3D, it could be a physics body 3D or, 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 or a character. I thought it was a um, character shape 3D as well. But anyway, um, so it could be any one of those. So it could be an area 3D and it gives us a little bit more freedom later on if we want to. And we're going to get this thing called the Collider. So let's have a quick look. I'm going to click on this now. I'm not going to print that one just yet. Draw K rather. Um, in fact, let's get rid of that as well. Let's just run it and click some things here and let's have a look and see what happens. So I'm going to start clicking around and let's just keep an eye on the bottom, bottom left hand side. I'm clicking and it's coming up with something and it's saying something down here. Area 3D. And this is this is the thing I've noticed. It, it, I was expecting that to say the name of the item it collided with, but it doesn't. It actually just says this is the area 3D, and it's you can see its collider ID here. Uh, that's its unique ID in the scene. Uh, but this doesn't mean a lot to us, and that's why that's why we're using groups. So what I can then do is I can um, over here, Control K here. I've said, uh, and I need to get the collider. So I'm from the dictionary. I'm getting the collider object. So that's this one here. It's a key value pair. Right. So it's going to get that and it's going to store that area 3D. Um, and then get groups. So if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky, it will it will return the group that I've assigned that object to. Alright, so here we go. So if I just click on the path, you can see, and I'm going to hang on, let's just get rid of that one. So it's a little bit easier to see. So if I click on here now, you can see it's saying grid empty. That's a good start on the bottom left there. Um, path that's good if i click on that one path let's click on the crystal it's working rather well the rock the rock is working um might just comment that out as well so we, don't, we, don't, we don't need the the alien aliens we're going along now do we they don't have colliders by the way did you notice that? so if i click on a if i click on, oh now they're not coming up but if if i clicked on them, it wouldn't have registered them because we didn't put a collider for them. so if i click on tree Nothing's happening with the tree. Okay, all right. Well, we made a mistake there by the looks of it, but other things seem to be working. Um, so let's just quickly have a look and see what's wrong with tile tree. I put the group. I haven't put the group on the tree. I put it on the collision shape. So let's just remove that there, and then we'll put it onto tile tree here. There we go. So grid underscore tree, and then we'll add it there. All right. So click on here, and now if we click on tree. We're back in the game, so everything here now is completely clickable. So, and this will give us a real opportunity now to say, right, well, we'll we'll put a little um, uh, toolbar down here that says, well, where do you want to drag your um, your your turret to? And as we pull this over, will it'll it'll either let us do it or it won't. And this is the great thing you can see at the moment. If I hold my mouse down, it's actually kind of just doing that. I, I don't know if that's a desired result yet. We may want it so that it's on mouse up or something, but we're probably going to be dragging. So something something to think about down there. And that, in a nutshell, in a longish nutshell, is how you do uh, ray casting in Godot. So I'll just bring back the script. Hang on. Here we go. So as always, I will check this in. And next in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll use this and we'll create a little box down the bottom where we can actually drag our turrets onto the scene. We need to put some logic on those turrets so they can fire, but at least let's get them so they can actually actually be placed in a convenient way.
That's going to look pretty cool, I promise you. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, until next time, uh, thank you as always for the support. I'm loving the support. I'm, I'm absolutely, I think I've just passed 700 subscribers, which is outstanding. So thank you so much for all that support. Um, I, I, I was shooting for 750 by Christmas. Could I say a thousand? Am I, am, I, am I pushing my luck? I'll leave it up to you. But if you're liking it and enjoying it, then please subscribe. For stuff you want to see, please let me know. Until next time, shark out.